Hey YouTube, making a video on disassembly of this buffer. What I'm doing is this is a Colt H1 buffer and I'm going to change it out to an H3 configuration. Um, me personally, I'm just doing that because I want a lot of guns suppressed and uh, an H1 buffer is uh, just a little bit too light. I, I'd like to tune it for optimal performance. So that's why I'm doing that. So why disassemble? Why do this? You know, why do I recommend to customize your buffer? Well, pretty simple because you're able to customize it. If I want to make this lighter, if I want to make this a carbine three ounce buffer, I can just disassemble all the weights. I got a bunch of weights in here. Let me show you. So here's some tungsten weights. These are what I'm going to be replacing the steel weights with. And let me show you some steel weights. So here are some steel weights and the rubber cushion as well. And then we got some tungsten weights. And so I'm going to change out this to a 5.4 ounce H3 buffer by replacing all the steel weights and put them all with tungsten. This does have one end, one uh, tungsten weight. So I believe it's currently at, I believe 3.8 ounces because uh, these are, are double the weight of steel. The reason why it's not more common to have heavier buffers is because steel is much cheaper to make compared to tungsten. So it's all just a cost factor. So. Uh, that's enough. That's why I recommend you customize your buffer. Let me show you how to disassemble. So all you do is just have a roll pin. And that's all it is. Just drive this roll pin out. It appears that I'm using a 1 8 inch roll pin. And be sure you use an actual roll pin punch. Notice how it has a little tip at the end. This helps it from deforming. Because if you use just a regular punch, you can easily uh, deform it, have it crush in. So just use a whole pin punch. You know, I, I bought this whole set for about 10 bucks. So just be sure to use the right tools. I don't have the right, eh, that's funny I say that. I don't have the right exact punch set. So what I'm gonna be doing is pu pushing against here and then using the hammer and punch like this. I am gonna do, be doing it off camera because I have this tripod in front of me. It's not gonna be ideal for me to uh, use a hammer and punch in front of the camera. But let me uh, take it out real quick, but it's pretty simple. Just get the right roll pin punch, punch it out. Okay, easy work, came right out. Now here's the tricky part, um, because typically, like this is a really old cold buffer, this is like 20 years old, and even though the roll pin is out, it is not going to want to come out. I'm probably either going to edit this or, or fast forward, but what I'm going to do is just push one side, push the other side, push one side, basically you play with it until you can actually pry it out. What I'm gonna do is I have, I'd use like a flat edge, like ma imagine a flat head and just pry it out. But I'm probably gonna have to skip forward because this is a really old buffer that's been used a lot and um, it's gonna take me a bit. But uh, let me jump forward, but that's how you imagine you just pry this out. I wouldn't recommend using a pair of pliers because this is rubber, you know, you would permanently damage it, you would mar it up pretty bad. It would still function, but uh, cosmetically, ideally, you wouldn't scratch up things if you can avoid it. But let me uh, fast forward, and I'll show you uh, what happens once it's out. So I'm back, I got it disassembled. Here's the plastic piece, just comes straight out, but it, it can be very hard, or it can be very easy. I've had some that I can just take it apart with my hand. This one was really old. This is about a 15 year old Colt buffer. It's also probably has several rounds, uh, several thousand rounds down the range with the buffer. So it's pretty extremely tight in there. What I did was this is a box cutter. I used the flat, it's a very dull box cutter. So I just used the flat end of the blade, pried open. How to work it, you know, 
work it open and then use the this is actually a safety mechanism so you don't cut yourself when you're cutting but um, this is basically a flat edge and it's not pointy because if you use a pointy flathead for example you can chew up the plastic piece so just be careful with that but that's how I you know, pot it open you can easily use a flathead or anything. Take it out and now this is what we're here for to disassemble the uh, internals, take out the steel weights and replace them with tungsten. So, notice how it's oriented. The tungsten weight is at the rear and the steel weights are at the front. And as configured, this is a, I believe, a 3.8 ounce configuration. So, we're going to place the steel weights and notice how there is a rubber shim in between each of the weights. So here are the two steel weights. Let's put them away. And I'm going to place them with two more tungsten weights. And I recommend to do this because it's very easy to customize the exact weight you need. And it's also cheaper. These weights are about $10 a piece. So I'm changing out my H1 to an H3 buffer for 20 bucks compared to buying, I think a Colt H3 buffer is probably like 70 bucks. You know, it's not cheap to buy it exactly uh, with this system you can get it the exact weight you need and it's also cheaper so that's why i recommend to do so so let's put it back i'm going to do a few this time and it goes shim weight shim and you need three shims you need three weights and you won't need the shim at the very end because it's butting against the end of the plastic buffer. So this basically functions as the rubber shim fills in all the gaps. Let's see if I can't get this lined up. Try to all get it in one go, but this seems like it'll work too. Um, so, just keep in mind that when you reinstall this, you want this to be as lined up as you can because you could easily install it like that and then it's going to be almost impossible. For, you aren't going to be able to turn this, at least this particular one, by hand. So you would have to take it out if you do get it misaligned. So let's see if I can't get this pressed in. And what I'm going to do is, it's a little bit off, but I'm going to try to line it up and use my whole pin punch as a guide. So it actually looks very lined up. Let's see if it, if it clears. It's not wanting to enter. Feels pretty good. Looks really lined up to me. So I'm going to start the wall pin. Super simple. That's what I'm doing. I'm just doing this. But I do have a tripod in front of me. So let me go back. Close. 
So there it is. Got the roll pin installed. Got the H3 buffer installed. Um, all the shims. This is super simple. It's not much to it, but it's just me just talking about how to disassemble, how to reassemble. If you do reassemble, for example, an H1, H2 weight, you just want these steel weights to be facing the frontmost. Um, it just helps with the uh, buffer cycle. Uh, that just seems to be the way the manufacturers do it, and that's the way I'd recommend to do it as well. Um, really not much to it. I recommend to do it. It's cheaper. It's more module, more modular. So uh, thanks for watching. Please comment. Please like and please uh, subscribe. I'm trying to build my following. I am trying to get to the milestone of a thousand subscribers. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you got this far, just leave a comment and I appreciate you guys.